Hello everybody! Today for our Thursday tutorials, <laughs> we are preparing to do some work on our rear black tank. So Jordan, <laughs> we're, what we're doing to make sure that it's thoroughly clean is running a hose here and then also I'll show you where else. We're doing a super flush. Super flush. Yeah, so we're cleaning out from the top and the bottom because we're gonna be taking apart this plumbing today to hopefully repair a broken seal and termination rod. Hopefully is the key word. <laughs> so what we have going on on the other side is a flush. So we have the hose running water up from the bottom as well. So what that does is creates a cyclone type of uh, effect inside this tank and hopefully get everything cleared out of there so we don't have too much that drips out when we take that valve off. We have to thank our friend Mike that we met in Tybee Island. Um, he's in upstate New York for introducing us to this awesome flush from the bottom. And we'll see how it all goes. So we have a clear flow through here. So we're turning off the water. Uh, one thing to note, if you get one of these hoses that wrap up small, they are quite lovely for storage. But as you can hear, it takes a little while for all the water to squeeze out of it. <laughs> Little side note. Jordan's getting the bottom removed. Yeah, we got to take all of this off to access under that piping right there. So it's very inconvenient. And we got directions from two different mechanics at RV stores. One said that they want us to cut a hole in it. And we're like, no. Because when we want to resell this, how are we supposed to resell it? If there's big holes in the bottom. Yeah. We got to get that infomercial stuff that you see on TV called Flex Seal. <laughs> where it can hold this. If you put a screen door on a boat, it can hold the boat up. There's two. But look, it's actually pretty malle malleable. Like I said, it comes right down. Yeah. As soon as we start loosening these bolts. So hopefully, after we pull out about 10 of these out, we'll, be we'll have some access to <laughs> this piping right here. Because then this is where we believe our seal is. So here's our rod. That is we, bent. That is bent, so we have to replace it. And if we could only just replace our rod, how convenient would that be? But we can't. <laughs> we have to replace the whole seal. And I do believe the part, because we have a 36 inch cable that comes with the rod. So about 36 inches, and it puts us right over here. Wouldn't you agree? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> Jesse wants me to take them all down. And then she's going to help me. My dad who, if you ever ask him, will say he worked at NASA and he was an engineer and a machinist. All if he's, excuse me, edit that part. <laughs> but forget all if we can get him to come out here because my dad working at NASA thinks that his, his line of help is just pointing and saying, now do this, now do that. <laughs> but honestly, I was just trying to get him to do it for me. So here we go. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> we got it under control, Pops. Door opens if you need some tools and stuff right there, right? <laughs> All right. You get the glasses, you get the old school on, huh? All right. So we so discovered. We, going long. we discovered we need Jordan need safety glasses. Safety glasses. <laughs> so these are what stuff. what Pops brought him. <laughs> got to protect the eyeballs. <laughs> oh, from the '60s. Nice. <laughs> these are the real ones he's using. He did find another pair. Lucky me, right? Yeah. Keep your eyes safe. So we're discovering that this is going to be pain in But <laughs> we'll edit that too. <laughs> um, so they've got, which we've talked about numerous times and talked about what in the world was grand design thinking and putting this and then having pieces that run underneath it. So right now we've come to the point where even though we didn't want to cut, 
there is no way to get around that pipe without cutting. We removed all the bolts that could drop it down far enough and we still can't get back to where that cable is connecting. So what does that mean for us, Jordan? We're going to cut it <laughs> and hopefully we can put it back together. We have some expanding sealant foam. That should work. Maybe we'll pick up some of that flex seal tape. Get the old flex seal tape. <laughs> That's what they said when I talked to an RV department, that they just cut a hole in it and then they duct tape it. Would any of you like to duct tape your RV? <laughs> no. That, that was a professional RV shop that told him that. So here we are trying to do a repair that should be somewhat simple. And because of this design, we get to start cutting. Hey, hey. <laughs> found it. It's here, uh, right above the axle. So if you have the Momentum 29G and you're trying to follow the cable, it actually <laughs> looks like it's going to the middle of the RV when in reality it's right here. Bye. The rear tire above the axle. Right, we got the four bolts off, but now we have to get the piece out, which I could not do from under there. Not only is it right above the axle, but it also is above the brackets that are holding the tanks in. So kind of an awkward position. Okay, next problem. We have this piece that is bent and I believe we need to undo those. So we're working on getting the, the wrenches that will work to get those off. And then we got that piece down. Jordan got it and there wasn't too much. It was pretty clear water that came out, thankfully. <laughs> Jordan has gotten himself <laughs> jammed. <laughs> it's taking both of us. So <laughs> you got it. <laughs> oh, that's funny, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, babe. So what we have here, we got the new part in. There's a little bit of a problem, which we'll talk about in a minute. But right now. We have this piece that he's touching is the new part. It's the skinny piece and it goes in between these two pipes. And it came with new pieces here, which would have been quite lovely to put in, but this is a hard seal and we cannot break it. So we had to just use this piece that slides in between and then reattaches to the old brackets here. The problem with that is there's an o-ring that sits right on the edge and this is such a tight squeeze in here that if you don't get it perfectly that o-ring shifts and you leak so we've already done this once here we go for attempt number two okay so we've given you what we've had go wrong and what we've had to do thus far so now we're going to show you exactly what we had to do to align the part to get everything to function per perfectly so you know how to change your seal your, on your tanks. Okay? Your termination, your termination valve. valve seals. Okay, so we'll flip it around and all of these come apart. So you have four bolts in here. One, two, and then two more on top. Take those out, then this whole piece pops out. You can separate this piping just enough. The important part that you need to remember is to line up the o-rings perfectly because if you don't as soon as you try to test it out and make sure everything functions it will leak down getting to it was probably the hardest part for us with this design so we had to unscrew everything you can see our screw holes everywhere and then also to access it we ended up having to cut it which we really didn't want to do but there was no other way to really get to it 
and it wasn't really that bad of a job once we got going and everything worked. I think we've only been out here a couple hours, but that was taking everything apart and making sure we had the right tools to do the job. So again, when going to change this termination seal for your black tank, make sure and do a proper flush on your system, <laughs> draining all the water out because we don't want any of that nasty fecal matter and urine dripping down into our face. And then once you can access it, you can see where everything separates and it's kind of self-explanatory. It'll be able to walk through it. When you take these bolts apart, you can wiggle this loose and it'll pop out. And just remember when you put your O-rings in, make sure that they are in there completely, not even a little bit of off because then we'll have a leak. You'll know right You'll know. away. What did you just tell me? I'm proud of us for being able to do this, that when I looked for a mobile RV repair guy, in our local area to come and do this it was two hundred dollars just to show up and then sixty dollars <laughs> an hour to work on the part Whew. that wasn't including if they had to order parts for us and their yeah. markup so we found the part through the dealer through the dealer back in boise, back in boise idaho not the local <laughs> one if you're ever in new england with if you can at all avoid campers in Campers Inn. Campers Inn RV is the worst place to work with. I called them five five times every day, sometimes uh, twice a day and one day, left voicemails with their parts department. I left a message. No phone call back. So I drove there on a Monday afternoon. No reason they should have been closed, but I get there and it's an hour drive for us and their parts department is closed. And I'm like, okay, so I'm getting a little more angry and upset and I'm trying to remain calm. And I speak to their service manager. He takes all of my information, all of it, and says, we will have somebody contact you first thing the next morning. Guess what? Nobody contacted no us. No call. And we still have local, yet to hear. And I, I've never heard from them. Like what? Three weeks? Three weeks. So. Campers in. We went back to Boise, to Brett's RV, who's very helpful. Shout out again to Brett's RV in Boise. Very helpful. The parts department guy got right a hold of me, talked to me, called me back within 20 minutes, called me back, and got us our parts. So here's what we deal with. All right, I'll get up off okay. the ground here. There was a piece we showed you on the inside. Here's the termination rod. <laughs> this is what bent. If you can see it in there, it's hard to really tell, but you can kind of see it's little curvature. So, yeah, this is supposed to go in and out yeah. of this. And, to, I, and it bent. To open and, and so close that nasty Basically, gate. it left this pipe that's caked with, you can see it, it's feces. nasty. Yes, yeah, feces and fecal matter. Ew. It kept this cage open, so we had an issue of just running water the whole time. So we haven't been able to use our back toilet but, since that opened. Um, so these O-rings are what we were telling you about. They need to go in on each side like that. And they just sit there yeah. perfectly fit. So, in this between. is why they say to lubricate them because once you get them in there there's a lot of friction but you can use vaseline or a silicone spray that which, way when you put those pipings together it'll, it should in theory slide right in which the new ones came loose yeah the new ones came lubricated but sometimes they're really rough and dry in friction you won't be able to slide these pipings in and close it and latch it together don't worry, folks. He washed those O-rings well. Yeah, I'm going to wash my hands anyway, but <laughs> that doesn't matter. I just want everyone to know that as difficult of a job as it looks like it may be to change out your septic tank valves, your seals that are leaking, because I'm sure a lot of people out there on the road have leaking seals. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. The worst thing we had to do was take apart the undercarriage. Yeah, the worst part was trying to get to trying it. Trying to access it. Once we were <laughs> able to access it, we could see everything that was running and it made a lot more sense. And this is first time repairs for us. Yeah. So, and if we can do it, so can you. <laughs> okay, I hope this was helpful. Bye, everybody. Oh, we forgot one thing. Oh, look, I have dirt on my nose. <laughs> um, we forgot one thing. So, little problem with the new part. Um, I'm going to leave that dirt on my nose just to show the work that we've done today. Weeds in my hair. But we have this little issue. Let me s around. That is where our handle is supposed to connect. The new part is that much 
too short. So the cable is about, oh gosh, what is that? Six inches, which is what I guessed, um, too short. So we are going to move this bracket, drill some new holes and attach it here, which is unpleasantly close to our axle, but that is what we will have to do to make it work. So, um, before you take things apart, if you can wait for a new part to come, if that's the case that you get one that's too short like we did, um, make sure that you measure. We didn't do that. Uh, we just went off of Brett's RV saying that this was the right part and that it would work, which it works. It just takes a little extra work to be fully functional. So, bye everybody. All right, so the final piece was to get the bracket moved over. We showed you guys yesterday. Let's turn this around. So the bracket used to be here and the new part was um, a shorter cable. So we had to move the bracket all the way back right next to where our axle is attached to the frame, which didn't make us too happy, but it's gonna work. The other thing that we ran into, there we go, get you focused, was this is what they were using to hold that bracket in. And look at that sharp point right up against this pipe. Seems like a really bad idea to have something sharp against a pipe that is going to be moving as we are driving down the road. So uh, the final step will be to get some new bolts. We did put some on. Pops came out and drilled new holes for us. And right now we just have a regular screw and on there. We will go to the home supply store and get some locking nuts and get that all set and then it is done. We left it open overnight, um, just the bottom. We didn't end up covering everything until we wanted to make sure that we had no leaks and so far so good. It looks like we got the part in there well. So we'll let you know down the road if we come across more problems with this repair. But that's it for now. Bye everybody.